Hi, my name is Jason Nikoff, and I'm an assistant professor with Tennessee State University. I specialize in agronomy and biofuel crop production. Today we're going to be talking about how to produce oils from oilseed crops using specific equipment. Now the type of equipment that can be used to make oil is called an oil press. And we have one here that we're going to demonstrate how to use to make the oils. The press that we've got here uh, is one that we purchased from the oil press company. It costs about $8,500. And we also purchased the hopper that you see here from the same company for about $2,100. Now the hopper, of course, is uh, holding the seed. Um, the, in this case, we're using canola seed to produce our oil, but you can also use soybean or canola or sunflower, um, depending upon what type of oil seed is being produced. Now, the oil press that you see is taking that seed from the hopper and the seed enters the chamber that you see here and what is inside the chamber is a screw. And so this is uh, an, the exact uh, same screw that's inside the chamber now. And what it does is it rotates and it presses that seed that comes down into the chamber and it releases the oil. Now the oil is going to come out of the holes that you see at the end of the press here. And then the, uh, the what's left over is called the canola meal, and that's going to be essentially extruded out of the right-hand side, out of the no nozzle that you see at the end. So that meal that's extruded can be used as an animal feed because it's got a, a very high uh, protein content. So we're going to show the actual operation of the oil press now. This is the opposite side, um, and what you can see is that we have a cord that we are going to plug in. And the reason why we're doing this is because this is going to turn on the heating element that's at the front of the seed press. What the heating element does is it's going to help uh, start the process of pressing the seeds. Um, we only turn it on for usually two to three minutes, uh, maybe five minutes at the most. If you keep it on, what you're going to do is you're going to actually cause the, the seed that's in there to start burning. And so what that'll do is it's going to cause uh, all that burnt seed to get clogged in the, the end of the seed press and you're going to have some, some issues um, with, with getting um, oil extracted. Um, so. After, uh, after two to three minutes, what we do is we, we will unplug that and um, what will happen is the, the friction of the machine itself is going to help uh, produce the heat that's required so that we don't have to have that heating element on. Okay, so now that we've uh, already gotten the, the barrel heated up and uh, I've, I've already gone ahead and unplugged the, the electrical cord, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Um, to try to build up that friction to maintain the heat that's inside there. And what you see is we've got some meal coming out and we've also got some of the oil uh, coming out uh, into our oil container down below. And so once you've got this uh, equipment uh, set up and, and running well, it can basically run um, for 24-7 you know, um, without any major issues. Um, the only thing that people have to keep in mind is, of course, to check it regularly to, um, to change out the, the collection bins where you're collecting the uh, seed meal or the oil. Um, otherwise, um, that's really the only sort of uh, overall uh, labor that's required uh, while you're producing it. Now, one thing um, that usually uh, might occur in, when you're pressing these seeds is that you might have a, uh, a problem with the seed meal getting stuck in the nozzle. And so all you need to do for that is to simply drill it out. And so that's what we're gonna do to try to get some more of that seed meal to flow through. Okay, and you, you might need to do this uh, a few times uh, before you can get that, that meal to flow through really well. 
Uh, you can also uh, adjust the speed. And so the same, the same spot where we turned on the seed press, you can also adjust the speed. And so there's a knob that you can see here. Um, in that case, you can increase the number of hertz, um, essentially the, the rotations. And what that'll do is that'll help to, to force more of that seed meal through the nozzle. Um, so that's another way to try to, try to keep that, that seed meal going through there um, without any major hangups. And so sometimes uh, if, if for whatever reason you're not able to get that good flow going, um, you can also unscrew the nozzle uh, holder. And so what that'll do is that'll open up an even larger orifice that you can um, clean out, um, usually using some sort of a shop vac um, vacuum system. And then you can uh, screw the nozzle back in, the nozzle adapter and the nozzle, and then try again. This is also good if um, you forget to turn off the, the heat collar, um, you can open up this uh, nozzle adapter and that will allow more material to come through. And you can see we've got a pretty good flow here now of the canola meal that's coming out, of the oil that's, that's coming out into our oil container. Um, one thing to note, uh, you might be able to see some of the oil that's actually coming out along with the meal. Um, so because that's happening, you're not extracting as much oil as you'd like to. And the reason for that is, is all due to the speed at which this is doing the pressing. So we've got it up to about 45 hertz right now. Um, if we were to turn it down, say to around 30, um, a slower speed, we'd be able to reduce the amount of oil that's actually coming out in the meal and thereby increasing the amount of oil that's coming down into our oil container. So the faster speed, you'll be able to produce oil at a faster rate, but you're just not going to be as efficient as at the lower speeds. Okay, so now let's say you're, you're done pressing your oil and you wanna shut it down. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. All you need to do first off is to close the, the gate that you see here and that'll prevent any additional seed from coming down into the press and into the, into the, the screw press that's, that's in the barrel. Um, so what you can do is you can let the last bit run out and um, once it's run out, all you're going to need to do is to of course turn off the oil press and then you can open up the nozzle holder uh, using a, I think it's a, a one inch wrench and that's gonna allow any additional material to come out. Okay, so I'm actually gonna demonstrate taking that off. Um, even though we've still got some seed coming out, uh, normally you would just let that material press, um, but I'm just gonna show when you, when you open this up, uh, like I said before, you're gonna have a much larger orifice, and so that orifice is gonna allow that material to come out a lot quicker. And so you can see, um, once everything has come out, uh, then all you need to do is take a, a vacuum, um, like a shop vac, and you can just go and, and vacuum out the inside, any additional material or debris that's left in there, and then you're done and you're ready to go um, the next time. Okay, so we've already cleaned out all of the excess material from inside our, our crush plate. And what we're going to do now is if there's any material that's left over in the nozzle or the nozzle adapter, that's something that you're going to want to take the drill and just, just remove it until it's nice and, uh, nice and clean and then you're all set. So that basically wraps things up as far as uh, pressing oil uh, um, from oil seeds. And our next step is going to be taking that oil and going through the degumming process for biodiesel production.